hey, why? Because it destroys the myth of white supremacy. You gotta understand that white people's self-esteem is based off of African people's degradation. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mm -hmm. Amos Wilson says that it doesn't matter if he's a poor white dude in the trailer park, as long as he can say, at least I'm not a nigga, mm -hmm. his self-esteem is intact. Mm -hmm. That's why you have 70% of the population in America voting for a Trump, mm -hmm. a rich white cracker that they can't even relate to, but they'll vote to him because he speaks their language. Yeah, yeah. He speaks their language. Yeah. Haiti destroys the myth of white supremacy. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes I argue with Negro, they say, man, how we gonna beat the white man? We can't physically beat the white man. They don't understand warfare. Every war is not fought directly. Right. There's different, there's different forms of warfare. You have trade warfare. You have something called cold wars. What 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 people haven't fired a shot in 30 years, but they're still at war. Uh North Korea and South Korea at war 50 years. Not one shot fired, but they still at war. So Negroes be like, man, we can't fight it. You don't understand war. You have to study war and military science. That's very important to our development as African people. That we understand warfare, right? And so, given that Haiti destroys that myth of white supremacy, right? It also creates race pride. It gives you elements saying, you talk any Haitian, they're like, you was the first thing. That's why I never did. They don't speak no English, the first black Republican. It gives you pride to say that, right? Yeah. But not just the people on that island, <laughs> other people as well. And race pride creates uh, uh, self sufficient. Uh, behavior, right? So when you believe in yourself, when you have a a, a love of self and a, a identity as your culture, you want to do for self. You want to, hey man, let's open a school. Let's clean the community, clean the community up. Let's do certain things to better ourselves. So when you have that race pride, you now walk with your chest out and say, man, you can say whatever you want to say about me. I know who I am. I know what I am. Mm -hmm. And you can't diminish who I am as an African. So when you have pride, pride ultimately goes into self-sufficient behavior. So we'll get into that. So that's why Haiti's history is so, okay, I, okay, here's the meat and bones, baby. How many uh, African Americans or Africans do we have in the community in here right now? Mm -hmm. no, no, no. Af African Americans, I use that term just, <laughs> just so we can be yeah, clear. None, no? All right, cool, 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 all right, all right. So <laughs> African Americans and Haitians, are so deeply rooted, it, it's, it's very, very deeply rooted, how connected we are. Out of any other African group, African Americans and Haitians have a long history together. Very, very long history. A lot of y'all may think that y'all actually Haitian, y'all might be African American. And I'll tell you why. In the 1800s, Haiti opened up its door to Africans anywhere around the world to get their freedom. And over 250,000 African Americans escaped to go to Haiti, but we'll get into that a little later. All right. All right, slave codes. Uh, reading out aloud. So one of the biggest things that, that, that in America our African ancestors would be guilt would, would get killed for uh, was reading. That and besides, you know, talking back to reference, but reading, you will get killed for wait, for reading, you will get killed for reading. Why well, was reading so restricted? Because you read about this. Mm -hmm. You read about this. You read about what's taking place in Haiti. I can't allow you to read because then you, if I'm telling you a slave, how are how you going to read a newspaper with royalty in it? And when we say we royalty, as Haitian African people, we have two levels of royalty in our family mm -hmm. African continent and in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Because we created monarchy and we created royalty. We come from royalty, we are a royal people. And so it's very restricted for African Americans to read here in America because they didn't want them reading about Haiti. This uh, one right here was the second queen of Haiti. And here's the name of the top right there. Anybody want to try to pronounce that? We got somebody Spanish in here. All right. Oh, but this thing right here, man, read the stories about her. So white, she would throw these amazing gallons, as you can see right here from a photo. Um, um, so she would throw these, these, these amazing photos. They would go into like newspapers in France and all around the world. And she would come in 
And the white people like, how how to look clean of that? <laughs> she was like, this is a, this is a black country. You in, in America, you make us sit in the back. You have to sit in the back here. Mm-hmm. So she would tell him, you don't run nothing on this lane. Mm-hmm. This is the African lane. Am I making sense? I'm talking with a, 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 a koofy on my head with a tin can koofy. Am I making sense? Okay. It sounds good when I'm in my room. I just want to look it sound good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The power of influence. We truly got to understand the power of influence. I got my brothers in the room, people that I grew up with that know me. We all influence each other. And we all influence each other. Sad to say, negative. Remember what I said earlier about my daughters? It's no matter, it doesn't matter what I teach them. If they're in a community of 70 Negroes who don't know themselves and they don't have black men to protect them, then everything I teach them is going to be useless. So a lot of my brothers, I love them to death. We influence each other negatively. Now, when we be older now, we can sit back and say, remember that time? Yeah, I'm changing that. But uh, <laughs> now it's different. But the power of influence is very, very powerful, especially African influence. Look at our children now who hang on to these, these rappers. They're influenced by these rappers, right? They can re- recite their lines, they can give you bar for bar for bar because they're influenced by them. What did they know about Kwame Nkrumah? Where did they know about Marcus Garvey? Where did they know about Bullet T. Washington? Right? Give me a funny story why influence is so important. Bullet T. Washington wrote a book called Art from Slavery. Right? Mm-hmm. Marcus Garvey, a Jamaican, came to America, read that book, and it inspired him to write the philosophies and opinions of Marcus Garvey. Absolutely. Kwame Nkrumah, an African, came from Ghana, read the book by Marcus Garvey. And it inspired him to go back to Africa and free up Ghana to become the first independent African country. That's the power of influence. That's the power of reading. There would be no LeBron James, there's no Kobe Bryant. There would be no Kobe Bryant, there's Michael Jordan. Influence is very, very important. This is why these crackers pay these ignorant Africans to be the forefront of our community. Because they understand influence. They understand not all of us going to fall for it, but they need just enough of us to fall for it. Where it doesn't make a change. All right, so the US and America had a whole bunch of treaties. Take that. These treaties are very hard to find because putting it into context, during the time period, America wasn't what we think of us today to be. America was on 13 copies. So America was telling, hey, like, um, so we see y'all going around fighting and doing all this stuff like that. Please don't come mess with us. Please want to be cool. So Haiti was like, I don't know, bro, because um, you know, last time I seen you, you had owed me something, and now I want that. So America said, we were signing treaties. We a lot of treaties went back and forth to Haiti. Because America's on 13 colonies. They didn't have what Haiti had today. And again, we made uh, America what it is. Yes, sir. Sorry, let me ask you a question. What did Thomas Jefferson do to prevent the Haitians from coming here? At the moment, what slaves here? Did he play a part in that? Did the Haitians not come in here to liberate? Um, no, Haitians did come in. Haitians did come in. Did yeah, they did come in. Yeah. yeah. Um. So America was shaking her boots because again, we was more powerful at that time than America because we was on thirteen colonies. But then again, here we go. So <clears throat> America has a lot of treaties signed with the United States, and that's again, I got. America don't keep their treaty. They do not keep their promises with African people. It's always the thing behind the back. Okay, U.S. laws banned based on the Haitian Revolution. My apologies, sorry. Uh, remember I told you Mackinac in the 1700s was, was what? Called poison, right? This is Georgia state law. Can y'all see the law that will go in coexistence with a Mackinac situation? This is Georgia law that they passed in Georgia, right here, right there. Because the crackers heard about what he was doing, Makanda was doing poisoning, that they said in America, can't no Africans have no plants, you can't have no drum, you can't have no nothing, we stripping you all that stuff. We get y'all poisoning people. So we have stopped that. The, the laws in America at that time period was created based on Haiti, what Haiti was doing. Oh, 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 plants. What? Yeah, what are we doing with that? 
none of that. You can't have none of that. Y'all ain't forcing us. But Africans, Afri- I use the term African American to be specific so we know what we're talking about. But Africans in America were so smart that when the new Africans would come, they would learn from them. Mm-hmm. And there was one story I was reading by uh, in the slave narrative. Because um, you know a lot of a lot of states were emancipated later on, and they began to write narratives uh, for the uh, uh, Labrador Congress. And one thing that was talking about is how she killed three of her masters. Mm. Mm. Three of her masters. I shake to that sister. Three of them practiced the gravy. She would, because they couldn't use plates, she would break up glass and put it in his breakfast every morning until it ate up his intestines. And then one day the cracker would fall and die on the table. That's how smart Africans was. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put glass in your food. So small though that you can't see it. Mm. And it's gonna eat your intestines up. You're gonna bleed and you're gonna die. She killed three of her masses that way. So, who, who was it? Slave narratives. I don't remember the sister's name right now, but this is slave narratives. Oh, the book's called slave narratives? Yeah, the book's called slave narratives. Now, she ain't gonna know. They ain't gonna know. Gonna know. Gonna know. All right, we don't trust you to take food. <laughs> Why do you don't trust you to take food? Uh, <laughs> Uh, 1811 State Revolt in New Orleans was inspired by, by him. Yep. Was inspired by him. And actually, me and Vina actually traveled to New Orleans, and we actually went to the plantation, and one of the first things you see when we get there was three sisters, I'm not banging on the sisters, three sisters and her and their white friends. And I'm looking, I'm like, what, what, what? <laughs> Y'all want to come here and see how y'all mistreat us? Like, why are y'all here? Like, I don't understand. Like, why do they want to go and reenact what they ancestors put us through? It like it gives them a good feeling, but again, their self-esteem is based off our segregation. Mm-hmm. But um, this uh, uh, revolt in New Orleans, very, very popular. I want y'all to see this right here. They cut off the heads of the people who revolted and laid them out sixty miles. From the from the Bethlehem plantation to the Whitney plantation, they chopped their heads off at sixty miles, like 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 markers, just to put fear in other Africans to make them not want to rebel, right? Europeans, let me get sidetracked for a second. Europeans are very very keen on understanding epigenetics. And epigenetics is basically. DNA is passed on from child to child. Right. So when someone says, oh, you like your mom, or somebody says, don't say your mom say something like that, that's because you are your mom. And that's why I just poured, so the answer 